fizz buzz is a classic problem you're going to see pop up on leak code or in interviews and it's basically just a problem to see if you are able to structure a pretty basic for loop and perform some logic on the input of that loop um, the problem with this is it's not a very functional programming approach um, so I want to see if we can write this a different way I'm gonna go ahead and copy um, that method there which is a pretty standard implementation of fizzbuzz if you produce that uh, it's it's that's a passing test um, but I want to see if we can kind of push that boundary and write it in a little more functional programming approach and what I mean by that is I want to see if we can take advantage of a couple of the uh, methods provided by link so we can write this in a little bit more modular uh, and functional way so before I get into the code, I need to define a few of the terms. So the first uh, method we're going to be using is enumerable.aggregate. And the aggregate function basically applies an accumulator function over the sequence. It follows roughly list comprehension syntax, which basically you can see it takes a, specifies the output expression, takes a variable, an input set. And in our case, it's the accumulator and the seed value, and then it loops over the um, the elements of the specific sequence that we're iterating over. It follows um, this this kind of technique of deforestation, so it's actually a little bit more efficient um, than just using a typical for loop because of this, and it also takes advantage of just being a little more modular, just being a little more functional in terms of a pure input-output function that we can kind of uh, shift around. The next one is enumerable.range, uh, basically just you specify a start and end value and it creates a uh, sequence of the uh, provider range of numbers so we're going to use both of these in our code here so we're going to start with range and since we're specifying the last number in the range for fizzbuzz we're going to start with one for the range and that'll basically say hey give us a sequence of one to um, n in our case it might be five so one through five then we're going to call dot aggregate and again, we're going to be using one of the specific overrides of this method. So a couple things I've specified here is I've specified the um, specific end value, right? The return value, so new list of string. That's what we're, that's what's going to be returned from our aggregate function. The accumulator is what we're going to be adding to. So that's going to be our, our if you hover over it, it'll actually be a list of that string. And we're going to be adding to that list every time we we, we iterate through one of the, these elements. Um, I am going to change the next one. That's incorrect. That's not the seed value. That's just the specific element that we're, we're currently on. And then we're going to be returning uh, the, whatever value here. The logic is going to be the same, obviously, for fizzbuzz, right? We're, we're checking if there's a remainder, you know, depending on if there is or if there isn't. We're going to be adding fizz, buzz, or whatever it is. Um, the difference between this now is we're going to have to change, uh, obviously, our, our naming. So we're going to be, instead of string list.add, we're going to be adding it to the accumulator, which again is the list of string. So now once we've added it appropriately, depending on, again, what string we're adding, we're going to go ahead and return the accumulator. And let's go ahead and run this and see our output. So you can see in the bottom, that's our correct response. One, two, and fizz.